In the best of times, uh, even when I was world number one for many, many weeks and months in a row, at certain times during the year I said, what can I improve? What do I need to change? Because if you don't do anything or you just do the same thing over and over again, you stay the same. And staying the same means going backwards because the other guys are working hard and improving. So I always needed to find ways to improve my game as well. I don't think it's enough just to love it and then just to do it and go out and win it. It's not that simple. You need to have um, structured goals. You need to tell yourself, okay, what are my goals for the short term? What are my goals for the long term? Now that I've accomplished almost everything, um, I'm supposed to go out on the tennis court thinking, let's just play free, let's just hit the ball, who cares, you know? But this is not how you're going to win matches because it comes down to margins and you have to be um, so clear in your mind exactly what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And for me, it doesn't work without any goals, without any targets. I cannot compete properly. It's okay to lose, like him probably too, it's okay to lose, but you still want it badly. So, and I think that combination got me the win tonight. Then that's where confidence can help in a big, big way, because you might be actually not feeling great physically or mentally, you're drained, but the confidence somehow gets you through. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have confidence, that's then when you have to um, sort of trust all the hard work you've done and you have to keep on working hard so success comes back. Mm. So that's, that's when it becomes tricky, I think, when confidence sort of totally leaves you or you doubt your confidence, you know? So how I stay motivated? I think for me it's actually quite easy because I get a chance to play on center courts around the world. Um, I've seen a lot of the places many times, so I have a lot of friends uh, that I have in each city that I visit and then training, that's where I think it's most challenging to make trainings exciting. So I try to sometimes practice in new places, have fun practice partners, and I think the team's super crucial for me. You know, they are the ones that tell me, let's do the running, let's do the jumping, let's do the, you know, this exercise in tennis today, this is what we do in treatment today. And all these things make it uh, so worthwhile then. And then if you win a little bit, it's, uh, it's more fun my overall game, I have to come to the net, I have to try to finish, I have to try to take chances. To me, it seemed like there was more positives than negatives and if my dream was really to become a professional tennis player, maybe I felt I should do it. Even though I was I had a great setup in, in Basel in, at home and uh, then when I went, uh, it was very exciting, scary in some ways because I was only 14 years old and I was in a foster family from Monday to Fridays and only came home on the weekends and I remember, you know, crying and on the train on, and I knew I was not going to see my family for, you know, for five days and then I came back on Friday, I was so happy finally when I could leave again. So the first six months were, were, were pretty brutal actually. I'm not sure if my goal was to play pretty, play beautiful, you know, um, I wanted to win. I want, I'm a winner and that, uh, that's what the purpose is if I play tennis, is I go out there and I play good tennis and I try to entertain the crowd. Yeah, it's difficult to get used to that you know, um, recognition and the, the awareness that everybody might know you, but it, and especially in this day and age with social media and everybody having a phone almost uh, with pictures, it, it becomes tricky, you know, but I think I've uh, been able to remain the person I am and I, keep, I stay very grounded so I don't see that sex symbol kind of guy anyway and uh, I don't feel that way. I feel like a, a normal guy who, who just has to be quite successful. But it's, it has to start with your family. Um, they've given me everything you know, on my way and they've given me the opportunity and uh, I, at the end I guess I believe I could do it because of the people around me. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy I, I listen to them. It's in, very important to, to sort of move on and I think also losses make you stronger. Uh, it's important to learn out of those mistakes and then you become better and better player, you work harder, you know, a light goes up in your head and you're like, you know what, I think I understand now what I need to improve. Being number one in the world and, you know, having the pressure is sort of uh, everybody expecting me to win and I, I think I handle it well and that's why I don't put myself under extra pressure and uh, I really hope I can do well and that's, that's really how I look at things and not going crazy about all the different types of record, but it's nice playing for them or against them. Sometimes it tends to get a little bit much, you know, you have red carpet, sponsors, media. It tends to get a little lot, uh, much for, for, you know, a person, but I think I handle it well. And uh, I, I always said, if I become number one in the world, I'm going to actually start to work harder. And that's exactly what happened. And I think it paid off and I'm still here today. So it's just great. But I think I was able to play the way I play today because of my fitness, because of of my physical efforts I've put into it. I, I wasn't, I could not believe 
the balls I would be able to to catch, you know, on the court through fitness. And I feel like that connected everything. The moment I became physically strong, um, I would get to balls I didn't know I could get to. And then with my talent and my hand-eye coordination and my technique, I was able to pull off shots I never thought I could. And I think this is when it, when it got really a lot of fun for me. That's when tennis went into overdrive, I believe. So um, you have to find your own identity and do it your way. But you can look at them, what they did so good, and maybe use that for your technique or for your, for your game. And I think I did that very well. Well, I've done so much better than I ever thought I would that it's it's almost strange for me to talk about what more do you want or or what have you done that really like surprised you because it's basically everything I've done has surprised me because uh, I do come from a small village in Switzerland and we don't think that big, you know. And I've done so much more than all of that that anything I do right now is just incredible. But obviously, at one point you get uh, used to winning so much and then you're like, okay, there's a th certain things I would like to reach. It's just uh, happy to play tennis and uh, spend time with my friends, really. And uh, it ended here, so it's been a it's been a perfect journey. I would do it all over again. Very rare in this day and age. I think we actually almost appreciate if that the other person exists and plays so well because it actually brings the best uh, out of you. And uh, I've been had a, had, a, had a harder time when more and more rivals were coming up because I always thought, I don't need those guys, I, I'm just happy to dominate and play so well. But it's, it's nice having all these group of guys uh, at the top right now. I guess you do have incredible confidence in yourself sometimes, but then also big doubts. Whereas if you see another player, all you see is his strengths and weaknesses as a, you know, more just like on the surface. So you don't know truly how confident or how worried he is about his own game. So sometimes it's a bit of a, you know, a chess game or I don't want to say you pretend like you're super fit or you're super, uh, you know, tired. You know, you try to maybe sort of fake the guy out a little bit, you know, because what the other guy sees might affect the way he plays. But at the end of the day, I just tried to play tough and fair and then made a better guy win. It was only myself who could tell myself, now, Roger, you have to come down. Otherwise, it's not going to... It's not going to last because you're losing weight, much energy. So I, I stopped and I, I'm really focused. Working on your weaknesses makes you maybe an overall complete player, but you won't be dangerous anymore, you know? So you can sometimes relate to that in, in some businesses as well. That's why uh, I like to work on the strength and it's, it's really helped me through, throughout my career. I'm happy I started so early. I was able to learn a lot in the beginning of my career um, through being in, on the big stage in the big moment, meeting very influential and important people who have taught me great things. You know, um, my mom has been the big inspiration behind me starting my own foundation at a very young age. And here we reach now 10 years of the foundation. We've reached, I think, the lives of about 86,000 kids so far with quality education. And I, feel, I really still feel we're at the beginning and I hope we can achieve great things.